in the midst of your presence. Father, we just want to say thank you. We thank you for everyone at the side of our voice. God, we pray now in the name of Jesus that God, the Holy Spirit, continue to do a work in this house. Thank you for encamping your holy angels all about us. Father, we pray you continue to minister unto us. Now, Father, as we stand on the watch all the time to preach your word, we thank you that your word will go forth and not return unto you, Lord, but it will accomplish the very thing that you sent it forth to do. Give us a gift to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church, and to each one of us as individuals. God, we thank you because you are our Father, and you talk to us, and that you love us. You wish to do us good and not harm, and for that, Father, we thank you. Father, help me to preach your word, anoint me with a fresh anointing. Use me for your glory. And as we preach your word and stand before your people, let not the wrong spirit be projected from this podium. But help me to preach your word on the power of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, have your way. We pray, thank you, Father, that as your word go forth, you will bring forth salvation, deliverance, and healing for your people. Thank you for the working of miracles. As your word go forth, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Grant us revelation of knowledge, wisdom, all spiritual understanding, and discernment. Let Jesus be glorified and the devil be terrified. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray and we give thanks. And if you're in agreement with that prayer, say amen and give God some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Shoes on your feet. You are giving praise this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Amen. Thank God for His presence. Thank God for our praise and worship leaders and our minister of music. God bless you all. Thank you so much for ushering us into the presence of the Lord. Thank you, one of God, for the prayer. Amen. And we pray this morning. Bring forth deliverance. To the people of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's what it's all about. We're living in the hour now. You don't need nobody to lay hands on you. Amen. You better anoint and appoint and lay hands on yourself. Amen. One thing about it. Only you have the authority to keep the devil out of your house. Come on, talk to me. I'm talking about this house and your physical house as well. That house, that home you stay in. Amen. Also this house. As long as you give permission. Uh, uh, come on, talk to me. You can stay there as long as you give them permission to stay there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Ain't God all right? Second Corinthians chapter 10. Second Corinthians chapter 10. If you do not have a Bible, please raise your hand and one of our ushers will be happy to bring you one. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 10. They for me a passage of scripture. We've been here for the last week or two. We're not done yet. Amen. God still has a work to do. Amen. How many of y'all know, know that deliverance is a process? Yes, it is. How many of y'all know sanctification is a process? Yes, it is. How many of y'all know healing is a process? Process. Amen. Preach, it's a process. I, I was thinking over this past week from last Sunday, and let, let me go ahead and read my scripture. Let me go ahead and get started. I don't want to hold it long today. Amen. I know some of y'all stay in church too. Stay in church too long. <laughs> we'll sit in the restaurant through that and run us out. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 1. We don't take the time to bring it up. Now I'll call myself and pleading with you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am Lord among you, but being absent and bold toward you. But I beg you that when I am present, I may not be bold with that confidence by which I intend to be bold against some who think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. But though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not common, but mighty in God, but putting down 
strongholds, underline that word stronghold, casting down arguments, arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. I want to use for a subject briefly this morning, part four, this is part four, a change of purpose, stronghold. And, and then if I had to use for another thought, something the Holy Spirit had been dealing with me all week, and I, I know many of you uh, have seen, and, and this is what I'm, I know many of you, because I can, you can go either way with this, you know, the walking dead. And I know some of you probably have seen that movie, that, that series, or whatever on TV. I've never looked at it myself. I've seen them walking with my dead great. I tell them on TV, not that I'm scared of anything. But but most of us, we were dead in Christ Jesus. We were dead in our sins, our trespasses, before God saved us, quickened our moral bodies, and brought us into His soul, His soul salvation. Amen. But I want to talk about the walking wounded. If I had to use a, a subtopic, it would be the walking wounded. Because what you realize is that we have a whole world full of hurting people that, 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 are, that are wounded. Wounded people. And, and not only in the world, but even in the church, we have a lot of Wounded warriors. Come on, talk to me. Y'all pray with me. Wounded warriors. And, and then there, there's a little group for those that are veterans serving the military. And, and, and they, they, they help a lot of people to come back from our various wars and things that have lost the use of their limbs and legs. And, and they have a group called Wounded Warriors. But, the, but so many people are walking and they wounded. And, and this is the reason why, uh, Sister Lisa, I, I'm getting there, that you have to be mindful even how you approach people in this hour. Call, call and, and I'm not being fighting, I'm just dealing with issues because you got a lot of people that are bipolar and schizophrenic. In other words, they have multiple personalities. I'm not trying to be smart in it. I'm going to deal with demons together to deal with all of our issues. Because all of us, uh, we go off sometimes. And if somebody push the wrong button, I, I don't care if you can hot that boy for your teeth, talking to us all you want to. If somebody mash the right button, uh, come on, talk to me now. Because and, 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 see, all of us, we, we hadn't got that yet. We, we had not put on our, our wing shit. Come on, talk to me now. Come on. And, and, and we can be full of the Holy Ghost, and, 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 but, but it don't take a whole lot for us to go off. Amen. Come, come on. Amen. And, and that's why the scripture says, be angry, but sin not. But well, ain't nothing wrong. It's not a sin to be angry because you ought to be angry at sin. And because of sin. But, but when but the sin come, you be angry, but the sin come in when you bring up them cuss words. Y'all, y'all, y'all will pray for that's all right. I, I mean, can we take our time on this here? And see, we've been dealing with the scripture from Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2. And if I just look around in the church right now, I, I'm not talking about that. People watching my camera, there's a whole lot of wounded people on your job, in your family. I mean, people wounded for all kind of reasons. Come on, talk to me now. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and see, we, these wounds sometimes are so bad that you just can't pacify these wounds. Come on, come on. I, 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 some of them, some, sometimes, you know, when you get a little spit, you put a little band-aid on it. And I, I know when little boy, we used to come up, we used to take a little spit and rub on something when we got a little scratch. But some of our wounds need some some some, some stitches in them. They they, they, they come out y'all go help. I'm trying to help somebody. They need some stitches in them. Uh, uh, some, 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 some of us are, are bleeding real bad. Come on, talk to me. Uh oh, uh, uh, y'all y'all don't talk. Can I can I take my time now? He said that. And we've been dealing with 
this thing from Romans chapter 12, he taught that I beseech, I be, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this word, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you be proved what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God is. And we talked about the thing that how God is not really looking at the sins of people, but he's looking at hearts. And Apostle McCart brought that thing out when she was here. But but I, I want to deal with this thing about this mind is what we want to go to this mind. Because I said on last Sunday, I, I don't care how handsome you think you are, how beautiful you think you are, and all that good stuff. I, I know you a bag of chips and all of that, and I, I'm not beating you down or anything. But, but it's a dangerous thing to be trapped in a body, and your mind ain't your friend. Come on, I can't help it. I didn't anybody in the house. So sometimes your, your mind, she, she was walking around the house this morning and yesterday and talking to somebody, Jesus, or I don't know who you're talking to. In other words, all of us do the same thing. We walk around talking to ourselves, and sometimes we say we're talking to Jesus, which may be true, but sometimes we be talking to ourselves because something is going on in our soul, in our spirit, and in our mind. We got a lot on our mind right now. Time where we can sit and stay in church all day and the preacher could preach a good hour. But I like some sister Smith. Even in reading scripture, you can't read but one or two scriptures. And even in preaching, you can't preach no more about 15 or 20 minutes because that's all the attention span most people have. And you can't even pray a whole lot, long time in praying because people's attention span, in other words, I got your attention right now, but I know why your mind going to start to wonder about the football game and what you going to eat when you leave church. Oh, y'all, yeah, that's all right. Oh, my God. See, see that attention span, our, our minds have a tendency to wonder. So we talk about Jesus in Matthew 22, 37, 40. Oh, he talked about that scripture all the time. Let me tell you something. You can talk about Matthew 22, 37, 40 until Jesus come. Because what the world need now is more love. Love of God and love of your neighbor. That thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And that heart thing, see the heart stands for man's moral, mental, and mental activity. We understand that that heart is the chief organ of physical life. And then it talks about your soul. And I, I don't know why I keep saying it because there's something about that inward man. See, that you've got to understand, my brother, so that all of us got up this morning and took a bath or a shower or wash up a bird bath and put a little deodorant on and cologne and perfume and all that stuff. And we put on our clothes to come to church. And we all look good and nice on the outside. But what's going on on the inside is the issue that God wants to deal with. Come on, talk to me now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what's, what's going on the inside of me? Come, my soul is the seat of will and purpose. Is what my feelings and my desires and my emotions are. My my soul is the seat of personality. It is the seat of new life. It is the seat of appetite. My soul is the inward man. It, your soul is it, the real you. And I, you heard me say this before. Because, and I keep repeating because a lot of people don't understand that that even when you die or whatever, uh, your soul and your spirit never die. But Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. The only thing that is in that coffin is that house that your soul and your spirit used to live in. And when your soul you die, your soul and your spirit is going to come somewhere. You got to understand. That's the reason why when you're in the bed at night and you have nightmares and you have dreams and it looks like sometimes you can sleep all night long and you get up in the morning you still tired because on the inside there's been a warfare that's going on. You are restless. You got a lot on your mind. Sometimes I can't go to sleep at night because the Holy Ghost be ministering to me and sometimes I can't go to sleep at night because I got a whole lot of stuff on my mind. I'm stressed out of back, distressed out of back there. And I toss and turn all night long. I'm just using myself as an example because I don't want to talk about none of y'all because you may not come back no more. But that's all right. I toss and turn all night long. Sometimes we do cat now. We get a little bit here and a little bit there. That's me why a whole lot of folks on amphetamines and drugs and alcohol. If I can just take a good drink to help knock me 
me out. We got a pill to put us to sleep and a pill to keep us warm. We got pills for everything. Y'all don't hear that. But it still do you know make no difference what you take or what you drink until you get delivered down in your soul, get your deliverance and get your healing. You still ain't gonna have no peace. I know wreck because what's going on with you is down in your heart and your soul. Oh my God. Y'all gonna pray with me? Y'all gonna pray with me? The mind is the brain. Right there. I, I know this big side elementary, y'all. We everybody got a brain. Huh. The mind, the brain. That that's 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 the kicker right there. See, I was talking about this thing on last week, the last two weeks. Huh. And then we had the Facebook whistleblower. Facebook is running a lot of folk crazy. Yeah. Got a lot of folk mad out here. All this fake news. And that's the reason why you got this eye gate in your ear gate. In other words, your eye gate in your ear gate is the wonder. It is the door to your enemy, your soul, and your spirit. So what you see and what you hear, it has an impact on what going on on the inside of you. Right, y'all. And I was saying this thing on oh, last week when I was talking about the men earlier. And I didn't mean no harm. Even with our little girls, you can't buy too many birds because and even with our men, when you're dealing with pornography, you got to understand something. When you look at that pornography, it, it places an imprint in your mind and in your soul. You don't have to watch it long, just a few minutes. And that imprint of what you see, what you visibly see, with your eye, it gets down in your soul. And you can remember that picture for years. Because it leaves an imprint on your soul. Even young girls, when they give up their virginity or whatever, and these players that play on the women, my God, y'all don't hear me. When we come to that he molests or incest or rape that takes place. It's just like when you took a picture in the old days, you had to go into a dark room and put that picture, that the photograph down in that cloth or whatever it was. I, I don't know. And then you see the picture. And it's the same way when it's dealing with your soul. That the devil takes an imprint, a picture of your soul. And that thing scars you for life. You don't ever know nobody's story. Oh, right, right, right. I'm trying to help somebody. To your eye gate and your ear gate. We had an incident on the job on yesterday. Young man and young lady about to get the fight. And I'm over there and I said, y'all, come on, don't lose your job. But that because on that job, you catch somebody, you all make to terminate. It don't make no difference how hard you hit them. When you hit them, you better knock them out. Because you fired in the way. Come on. <laughs> but the, the, the young man said, young man, please walk away, man. And they walk on that thing. This woman on the job, he said, job. And he said, blank this job or whatever. And he walked off and he didn't come back. But later on, I found out that this young man, he's a good worker. He stayed to himself. He don't bother nobody. Some years ago, he was on a job. He don't like confrontation. He was on a job, and him and some guy got the argument, and he was turning around working, and the guy came up with a knife and stabbed him in his back eight times. See, you don't never know nobody's story. In other words, put the tolerate me that foolishness. He just did the heck with this job and let me go. See, see, everybody got a story, huh? See. I, I got another one on my job. This deal with some stuff because I'm very observed of, of people. See, you're going to be any kind of preacher at all. You got to observe people. And I got one on my job. She's one of my shop girls up under me. She's just mean and nobody don't like it. She said, well, that, that's just who I am. Everybody know who I am. But, but, but that, she said, like, tell her that ain't nothing to be proud of. And I'm getting out of the of me because I done done all I could to work with her other than just pray. But what I see, Ella, that when you can't get along and you by yourself and ain't got no husband, I see a bitter woman that was hurt some time years ago. I don't know what she was raped or whether it was the incest. I don't, some 
man hurt at all, but I see a hurting woman that's been wounded for years and can't get along with no black. Oh, uh, you, you, you see both. You, you got to understand. See, you got to have a spirit of discernment. That's what a discernment of spirit is all about. It ain't just discerning about people got the demon of devil in them and all that kind of stuff. See, me, that's what the Bible says. Be slow to speak and quick to listen. Because if you listen long enough, when somebody been to you, you understand that something going on yes. down on the inside, some kind of hurt, some, some wounds, some scars, some tears, or whatever I said to anybody in the house. And I, we got a lot of walking, wounded people that have been hurt in relationships. That even children and parents can't get along. Brothers and sisters won't speak. Something happened somewhere down the line. I don't know what grandmama died and they got the gun or somebody got the jury and you didn't get none. I don't know what it was, but all I know that Jesus come no, by the descent the captain for him to heal the broken heart and my empire of the wound is spirit. Oh my God. Oh my God. We got some wound to keep in here. I ain't talking about you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that reason why, see, sometimes it don't take a whole lot for you to have a flashback. I, I don't know what a young man had a flashback yesterday. I got on him, and he had to go. I told him, walk away, young man. You understand what I'm saying? I didn't know he was going to walk away and go come back to work. He was back in his job. But something's going on. Something's going on with you, too. I, I, I don't know what you're hurting here, but I, I, I know a man. He's a doctor that never lost a case. Some of you have been hurt, and you don't want to forgive people that hurt at you. I want to let you know because you won't forgive that individual, that situation, that circumstance, that church, that pastor. They have you held into captivity. Oh my God. My God, y'all don't hear me. We, that, that's the reason why a lot of church folk don't visit the jailhouse no more. It ain't because of the pandemic. It's because how can you go to the jail and visit prisoners when you're a prisoner and in jail yourself? Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm not having anybody in the house. Uh, yeah, I told you a while ago, they didn't seek money, never called for the elders of the church and the elders sick. We got a whole lot of sick elders. Come on, come on, talk to me. Come, come on, talk to me now. And, and I'm, I'm talking about sick. I'm talking about spiritual sickness. Come on. And physical sickness as well. It is twofold. Physical and spiritual sickness. The Bible for a few minutes. See, you see young people. I see you sitting up in here. See, you you got to be careful who you hang with. you you got to be careful. Come on, y'all don't hear me. Who you hook up with. Every, every ride ain't your ride. Every party ain't your party. Every cookout ain't your cookout. And every drink ain't your drink. Because you can drink a drink somebody else fix and be your last drink. Because there's still riches and warlocks. And everybody ain't your free. There's some folk that jealous of you even though you ain't got nothing. I don't Might be your good looks or the way you walk or something. I don't know what it is. But folks jealous of you. And I just can't put a hat on why they jealous of me, old dog. I ain't got no hair. My God, I ain't got much teeth left. Come and talk to me now. Oh my God. Is y'all with me? See you. See, see, we so quick to listen to anything. And I, I told my man, don't, don't, don't let your ear, now it's a different than ministry, and you should listen to somebody that's hurt. But we so quick to listen to anything. We got so many crazy black women right now. Come on, talk to me. Crazy in the head. Because you done been called bees for so long that, that we begin to act just like a bee. And I heard women comment that I, I'm a bee and I know it. What kind of food is this in there? <laughs> I'm talking about bee. I ain't talking about boy and I'm talking about I, I mean, our women have been beat down instead of being treated like the beautiful African queens uh, that they are. My God, y'all hear that? You get a black man to go out and get a big old Caucasian woman, 300 pounds. Uh, now, the rain don't pick me 
keeps his own cultures uh, and because he got a Caucasian woman and I ain't being prejudiced, I just go up on the ethnic because it's something going down down in our soul. You give up a black woman for a big old 300 pound Caucasian woman and tell her about, I don't eat whole chilies and pick these no more. Like you done arrived and you got a trophy or something. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Oh, that's all right. Y'all don't see that. That's all right. That's all right. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. And see, a lot of our women, they, they got a story. Uh, I told my wife, I was going to stop and say a little bit, you don't know my story. You don't know my story. You, you don't know why I be acting crazy in the pool bed. Right. Come on, God knows, though. He knows what I want when they call. See, God got to have some crazy preachers just like me. Come on, talk to me. They deal with some folks just like you. Y'all don't hear me. See, see, so I can't be everybody, Pastor. Freedom ain't for everybody, but anybody can come in. Y'all don't hear me. But one thing for sure, when you come in here, we got to tell you the truth. Uh, my God, I ain't perfect. I'm still a work in progress. Y'all, it don't make no difference when you call me Bishop, Reverend, Pastor, whatever. I'm an imperfect individual that depending on God, the Holy Ghost, to continue to work on me and in me and for me that Jesus will be glorified in my life. But in the meantime, we got some stuff going on on the inside of you. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. uh, what I see and what I hear it affects my way of thinking. It affects my attitude. Huh? You you know, she can't watch a lot of CNN, but it's information. I have to watch it, even though it put a bad taste in your mouth. Some of it, you can't look, look at them old slave pictures, Amen. like Root and Cootie Coote. Hey, you about crazy? Ready to go get the gun and shoot? <laughs> Can't watch yeah, yeah, y'all don't have it. Because see, what you see, what you see, what you hear, it has an effect on your thinking. And see, a lot of us they spot crazy in the head because what we've been feeding our spirit, man, what you've been feeding your soul, that's the reason why you got to crucify this flesh every day because it affects my attitude. Come on, talk to me. And see, my attitude determines my altitude. Some of them have been striving for a long time to get to another plateau, to get to another dimension. And we've been wrestling. But we can't, like, we just can't go up because I got all this weight that's pulling me down. Hebrews 12 says, lay aside every sin and the weight. We got all these weights down in our soul, in our spirit, that just keep holding us back. Not walk according to the, for the weapons of our walk are not carnal, 
But my name, God, for the putting out of strongholds. A, a stronghold, one more time, it, it, it's a fortress. It, it's a fortified place with walls and barriers. Uh, it's it's, stuff, it's, clo it's a closed off area. Get me that. Because see, a lot of us, we, we got some stuff on the inside of me. We've been in California right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, all of us been in California now. I don't want to tell the story about the Christmas no more. I don't want to go there no more. But, but, but yesterday, she was, I, I bet I didn't go there neither. We don't, we don't lie. I bet I go there neither. But all of us got some things going on on the inside of us that, that we don't want nobody to bother. In other words, I, I, I want Jesus to deliver me of uh, something, but something I just got to hold on to because I don't want nobody to hurt me no more. You, you don't know my story. You don't know what I had to deal with you. I almost lost my life. Y'all don't hear that. So, so I got a stronghold. I got a fence. I got a perimeter around this thing. Even some of you, you having trouble forgiving people that hurt you here. You got it closed off. You got a barrier around there. I'm holding on to this. And we got a closet full of stuff. I'm talking about those of you that's in Christ. We got a closet full of stuff. You know how it is at your house when company come. You pick up stuff out of the floor, put it all up in the closet. That's the the same thing in our soulless realm, in our spirit. When Jesus comes to your house, you put all that stuff that's in the floor, in the closet, so you can hide it. Jesus, and you're still not delivered. Oh my God. Oh my God. Uh, can I work with this for a while? I, I'm going to take my time. If that's all right with y'all, I'm going to let you go. Give me a few more minutes. I know you're tired of hearing this, yeah, but I'm trying to help you. You see, if you love somebody, you tell them the truth. Just tell me the truth. Uh, uh, see, that stuff I got to protect. See, them things that I got to protect. That, that's the reason why you say now, but you still got some new magazines up in the cloth. Yeah. Come on, talk to me. Yeah. You, you say now, but you got a little ball in the top shelf in the cloth. Uh, got some old t-shirts up in that old hall of top that you can pull it out every night and then when you get some freak on. Come on, talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> How you look to keep me the jack that? That's in the cloth. Come on, talk to me now. Everybody got some stuff in the closet. Come on, talk to me now. <laughs> you, get, you still got some jacked up mini skirts you used to wear. Come on. <laughs> still up in the closet. I, I might hang on to that car. Ain't no telling what line is coming down the road. I, I might go back to a throwback like a baseball player with an old baseball suit. Come on, talk to me. Because <laughs> we had them flashbacks. <laughs> But that same thing I got to protect even in my mind. It's a sad thing to be held a prisoner in your mind. I, I remember in the day, you remember, well, I don't, God ain't done nothing like this. I remember in the day now, when we spoke that old Colombian red, and man, we spoke some stuff, had that old formaldehyde on it, and that old diesel fuel on it, and man, when you smoke them joints, I know y'all ain't never done nothing like that. I shouldn't be trying to teach y'all nothing like that. Because that's bad habits so going in your ears and your eyes. But when you smoke that stuff, you thought everybody was looking at you. You got to looking around and somebody talking. They talking about me over there. And you're acting all kind of crazy. And your mind was all messed up. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Y'all doing the blunt now. That's all right. Blunt you out. Like an owl. Oh, uh -huh. uh, yeah. Let that long preach. Let that long. See, I got to protect certain things uh, in, in my mind. See, see. Uh -huh. See, it's one of the saddest things. And I, I'm going to go there and I'm going to close out because you can't take it so much. It's a sad thing to be in a marriage or even in a relationship. You make a love to one person. Uh, come on. But down in your mind, you pretend they somebody else that you used to be with. Oh, 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 oh. That's the only way you can get your thrill on blueberry key. That's all right. That's crazy, that one. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, hey, I got to use my imagination. Uh, come on. That, that is the same way now, everybody. 
And you, you see how, how the world is? Uh, if, if I'm trying to sell a good life, it's got to be some woman coming up with all her stuff out and a ministry on. Oh, I'm going to go buy a good life. Maybe they'll come to me. <laughs> on the same being with a woman with a bikini on out there washing. Oh, I'm about to go get me a Mercedes B. Sex sales, everything. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. We're living in a sexually oriented society. That's all about PMS. I'm not talking about no move for a woman. Power, money, and sex. That's what it's all about. Oh, my God. Uh, that's what's going on in Washington right now. Why they don't greet me? It's all about power, money, and sex. Greed. Greed. They're elected in their own mind. I'll go all of them out. Democrats and Republicans. Ain't none of them doing nothing for nobody. If I can't get my way, get my morals, they go home like a bunch of little children. And the people that's hurting ain't getting nothing. We have to suffer the consequences. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. A stronghold is something firm. Give me a few more minutes. Something firm in my mind that I just can't let go. I'm going to make no what Jesus say or anybody, I got to hold this back. But I, I come to say you today, notice that you can let it go. Uh, what, what, whatever that's been troubling you in your soul and in your spirit. You see, I, I'm talking to some hurting people. That be why, see, I tell preachers all the time, when you put out that sport, huh? You 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 that word cut. Cause that's what cuts God and cut. But you can't leave the people open and bleed. You gotta come back and sew them back up. Amen. Let them know that there's some hope in you. Amen. That's all right. Huh? That, that Jesus is answer. All you gotta do is come to realization that God run it through. You can be delivered. I don't care what you have been through. There's deliverance, and after deliverance, then there's healing. See, see, that's another thing we got twisted up in the Pentecostal realm. You can't pray for nobody's healing until they get delivered. When you go in the operating room in the hospital, there's got to be a cut in the way. That's why really this word coming for to uproot some stuff. We got to start getting to the root. Of a problem. Who hurt you? Who did it to you? Fess it up to yourself. You ain't got to do it to me between you and God. I, I got to let this go. This happened 15, 10 years. I, I got to let this go. I, I can't let this demon torment me the rest of my life. That's deliverance in the house right now. I need some saints to be praying. Come on, come on. That's deliverance in the house. Let it go. Forgive them. You, you can't change what happened yesterday. But tomorrow, oh my God, your future, everything that God has promised you, He has changed His mind about you. Oh my God, oh my God, I, I gotta let it go. Everything in my soul, my spirit, my mind, I, I can't continue to lose sleep at night. You, you got so many women, come on, and so many men. Sister Lisa, I mean, 30 years old, looking like they said, <laughs> Come on, talk to me. Women, 20s and 30s, looking like they 60, 70 years old. Come on. A lot of them is alcohol, drugs. A lot of them is world race. I got y'all going to Being mistreated, beat down. There's a two way street. Men get beat down just like when they get beat down. Yeah. You see, that's another thing. You, you are, if you single, God will never bless you with somebody decent. Oh my God. God will, I say, God is not going to bless you with somebody decent in your life until you get delivered and healed. Oh my God, y'all know him. Because if you're not delivered and healed, all you're going to do is have them crazy as hell just like you. Oh my God. Am I hearing anybody? I know that's strong, but that's all right. Uh, we were watching it on YouTube all day long. He, 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 man, he, and the pastor say something about it. I'm going to lose straight past the hell. 
Oh, oh my God. My heaven and my and how you gotta get healed. You, you gotta get healed. Healing is to your better to get delivered and healed. You you you, you be just can't get prune the top of the tree. Sometimes I, I remember Elder Dallas, she remember we were back out there in, in the fields. I'm going back, Elder Dallas. I ain't gonna tell them how old we are, but I'm gonna go back about 50 years at least. <laughs> <laughs> when they had corn planted out there in the garden, you had the, 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 the corn in the Johnson branch. Yep. And you couldn't tell one from the other. And, and so you had to go out there and make sure that you pull up the Johnson branch by the root so that it wouldn't cut back. And see, the problem in the church, we do a lot of pruning, and that's pruning the scripture. But there are some things in our life that's got to be pulled up by the root. So that it don't come back no more. Yeah, it might be the time of your life, the best booty call you ever have. But I mean, that the booty call, he beat you down. Let it go. Oh my God. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Uh -huh. That pink Cadillac and that curly kick. I'm going to make two for That bald head. Uh, <laughs> light skin and y'all. Come on, Tommy. That pink Cadillac. Huh. Yeah, you thought he was a knight in shining armor, come to pick you up on a white horse. Huh. But he left you there shoving up the mess that the horse left. Come on, talk to my heaven, everybody. Oh. Uh, I'm out there now. Ever got bring on in? Ever got to bring me in? I like it. <laughs> you got that? Help me, Jesus. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. Yeah, y'all. You know, she had a Pepsi cola shake. <laughs> Couldn't cook pancakes. <laughs> and then all you had to do was just add water. <laughs> Y'all know that. That's all right. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> See, we went for a whole lot of things. That's our problem. We'll go for everything but Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> all you got to do is tell me you love her. See, me and no, all you got to do is tell us you love her. And most of them, it don't take nothing but a key, brother, and a pain in the roof. <laughs> Let me tell y'all something. I'm 
close out. We talking about that matter. One of the biggest things going on in this world now, the biggest issues is mental illness. We have a lot of people that are mentally ill because of their hurts and their wounds and their scars. It happened a long time ago. Pray, people, pray. Let it go. There's nothing you can do about what happened yesterday. The 10 years it is over with. Yes, it hurt. Nobody delivered your hurt. Yes, it hurt. You had nightmares, many sleepless nights, but God, God want to deliver you and heal you. Just come to Jesus. We need to have an old-fashioned altar call right now. You, you, Put your mask on. Social distance if you want to. Just come around out. You ain't got to tell nobody your story. Because all of us got one. Yeah. Yeah. Your story might be a little better than mine, a little worse. But I got a story too. Don't let nobody fool you. We got a lot of pastors, bishops, apostles, and prophets behind these podiums on Second Order. They hurt. They wound it just like you are. I got a book I had in seminary school that talks about the wounded healer out of Jesus. By his stripes, we are healed. He was wounded for our transgressions and our iniquities. The altars are open. You can come. You can come. Don't let pride keep in your seat. See, that's another thing. That pride in my mind. Ain't nobody trying to figure out what's going on in your life. Uh, I, I, I'm trying to get my own self together and help somebody on the way. The wounded healer was talking about Jesus. He was wounded for our transgressions and all of our iniquities. Uh, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Oh, my God. Help me, Holy Ghost. Yeah. Uh, and God will have grant us peace today. Uh, in our minds, in our souls, in our spirit, you can get delivered. Everybody out of in the church ought to be around here. Uh, Y'all don't hear it. Oh, my God. Father, we thank you. Just cry out right now. Just lift your hands up and cry. Go down on your knees. Just cry out. God already know about it. It ain't nobody's business, but you and God's business. But be real, God, I want to get delivered. Help me to get delivered from this thing. In the name of Jesus, every hurt, every wound, every scar, my God, even unforgiveness, God, help me forgive those that hurt me and wounded me, that talked about me. Oh, my God, forgive me, Jesus. Forgive us, Lord. Heal your people, God. Deliver your people. Heal your people. You came to bind up the broken heart, to heal the wounded spirit. You came, Jesus, to set the captive free. Set us free today in our minds, in our souls, in our spirit. God, you know what happened in our childhood and past relationships, on the job, in our family. Church hurt. God, deliver us and heal us in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, God. We give you praise, Father. Come on, cry out, cry out, cry out to God. Some of you went through rape and incest, child molestation. I'm just calling out some things. There's some people watching by way of internet as well. My God, don't been through one marriage, this marriage, that marriage. All kind of infidelity, all kind of things that was going on in that relationship. Broken promises, broken dreams. Oh my God. Oh my God. There's hope in Christ Jesus. God is trying to bring you back from a place in your mind of hopelessness and self-pity. God. God has come to rescue you, deliver you, and heal you of every hurt, every wound, and every scar. Me, no fixing of the righteous, but the Lord deliver 
us out of all. We demand do all night, but joy comes in the morning. It's morning time. It's morning time in your life. It's morning time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, people of God. Get your breakthrough. Get your breakthrough. Get your breakthrough. Take some time now. Get your breakthrough. The Holy Ghost is here to operate, to have surgery on you, to deliver you and heal you. He will sew you back up, make you whole. I want to be made whole. I want to be made whole. I want to be made whole physically, spiritually, financially. In the name of Jesus. 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 Everybody, give me that ball of oil. I got all, some oil. I got some oil here. I need a ball. Come on, get your breakthrough, people. Come on, get your breakthrough. Don't let this moment pass you by. Get your breakthrough. Get your breakthrough. Get your deliverance. Get your deliverance. Get your healing. Those that you in the congregation, bow your head down. Just hold your head down and pray in your seats. Pray in your seat that God will protect you from the freaks of this world. You young people, you got to understand there's a real cruel world out there. You're going to need the prayers of this church, the elders. You're going to need a covenant. If not here, you're going to need a prayer covenant to keep you safe. When you go to school and in college, y'all remember where that little man in Texas out there? Young man that been bullied and bullied and bullied. He can't have gone to school when I started to shoot and go on. Thank God nobody lost their life. But these are time we're living in. Used to be a time you could slap a little 12, 13 year old upside the head. But now that 12, 13 year old pull out, draw down on you. These are our Oh my God. But God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound man. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. She anoint your head. She anoint your head with all. It's all right. It's gonna be all right. God is a good God. God is a good God. You'll never be the same today. You gotta believe it by faith. You gotta walk this thing out. You gotta walk this thing out. You gotta walk this thing out. The devil gonna try to bring it back up to you. Say, devil, you a lie. Get back. I'm getting this thing out of my spirit, out of my mind. I gotta get it out of my soul. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We give you praise. When you get your breakthrough, you can go back to your seat, but you stay there, Terry. We'll stay here with you. Used to be in the old days in the Pentecostal church. The elder mothers in the church would stay there for hours and hours at that altar with you until people got their breakthrough, until there was a change. I know people in a hurry now, but we as elders and ministers in the church, as long as people are there and need help, we got to stay there with them until they get their breakthrough, until they get their deliverance. Y'all don't have a time to help somebody in the house. God is a good God. I said, God is a good God. Bless these marriages. Bless these marriages. Bless these relationships between parents and children. Bless these relationships between parents and children. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Young people, listen to me. All of us, you got to understand with relationships, and that's a whole other sermon. There are good relationships. Then there are bad relationships. There are healthy relationships. Then there are unhealthy relationships. A lot of people got ulcers. Y'all bleed ulcers. Stress out because of unhealthy relationships. Trying to hold on to something that used to be that ain't no more. Oh, Lord, have a little bit Come on, everybody. We love you. God bless you. God bless you. We love you. We love you. Come on, give God some praise. Give God some praise. Come on, give us some praise. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. I got one quick announcement before everybody comes. I said I wasn't going to say nothing about it, but thank God.